Hello, welcome back to the Small Talk Quick Start Guide. First thing we want to do is start up the VisualWorks PUL that you installed in, in the last video, the installation video. Remember, the first time you start up, do a file, save image as, and, and, and give it a name. I called mine Quick Start. And the reason you want to do that is so you have a working image and you preserve a clean image. In, in the PUL, you have the the workspace below here with the tabs and lots of useful information. What we're going to do is open up a workspace. A workspace is kind of a scratch pad area. Um, among other things, we can use it to evaluate small talk code. Uh, another thing we can do is set an option, style as small talk. This has it behave more like a code editor and re recognizes and, and parses small talk. So, in the Smalltalk primer, we talked about immediate objects, objects you could just type in. So for example, I can type in a five. Now what is that? Well, it's an, it's an integer object. How can I tell? Well, let me highlight it, right click, and inspect. It tells me it is, in fact, a small integer and that it's uh, immutable. I, I, I can't change it. It's a five is a five is a five. So also, I can go right here and say Object, Browse. This will bring me what will cover this also in a, its own video, um, the browser. And I can see all the messages I can send to it right here, small integer, as well as the many messages that small integer inherits from integer and number, arithmetic value, etc. So that's a that's an object, and I can send an object a message. In the in the small talk primer, we talked about three kinds of messages: unary, binary, and keyword. So here is a I'm typing in I'm starting to type in odd, and I it recognizes it there. This is the autocomplete. It knows that an integer will understand the messages you see here. So I want odd, and it's selected. I'm just going to hit the tab, and, and I now have that. Um, so I want to send the message odd to 5. I can do that right here, but I, I don't see any result. If I want to see the result, let me hover over this. It says print it. So remember, whenever you send a message to an object, you get an object back. This will print that object, and the object is true. Five, five is odd. I could also do, say, even. And if I do that, it'll, it will say false. OK. Now, since I'm, I'm using the, uh, it's behaving like, like code, I want to put a period here before I put my next thing in so it, it doesn't think we've got uh, improperly formed syntax. A binary message would be something like 5 plus 5. And there also, I can, I can execute that, nothing but if I want to execute it and see the result, the result is 10. And, and that 10 is an object. I can also highlight that and inspect the result. So this executes 5 plus 5 and inspects the re returning object which is the small integer 10. OK. Remember, everything is an object. Objects respond to messages. So we have unary, binary, and finally, I'll put a period here, keyword. Let me type in something, 0.14159, which you re may recognize as, as pi. And a keyword message would be round two. Let's say we want to round that to two decimal places. 0 0.1, and if I want to print the result, 3.14. Well, what kind of object is that? Let's, let's inspect the result. It is a floating point object in this case. Okay, it's no longer an integer. And I can also go see 
what messages I can send to a floating point object, which also inherits from number, just like just like integer and and small integer did. And I can see the actual representation here in this inspector window. I want to note one thing I'm doing here in the workspace. I can highlight all the code, or the workspace allows me to, to have the cursor to the right, and I can, it, it's just like highlighting it, and I can say print it, or highlight the whole thing, and that works the same. Just a, just a quick, a quick tip. So let me put my period here, and now I want to type in a string. A string is a single quote. Now notice it put in my double quotes with my, my cursor in between. Uh, the, uh, the autocomplete work does this for me, so I can type in now is the time, and this is a string. How can I, how can I see? Let me move the cursor to the end and inspect that. It is a byte string object, and if I go to browse that, I can see byte string, inherits from byte encoded string, inherits from string, character array, and again, I can see all the behavior basically representing the messages that I can send to it. Now is the time. Oh, going back to that, I can see the each element, and e each one of these is the, the character, character O, for example. Okay, so what messages can we send to this? Well, what if I wanted to send it as from the Smalltalk primer, primer as uppercase? What does that do? Well, it does exactly as you would expect. It returns another object with all the letters capitalized. It, it is a different object. Uh, period. I'm going to highlight this copy, or I can do Control C also. I wanted you to see V, V. Okay, so what else can we send it? How about reverse? Period. Print. Okay, now is the time reversed. That works. What else? Let's see, what if I want the, the index of a, of a particular letter? Index of and a, an immediate object for a character is the dollar sign. So if I want to find the dollar sign, the character T, what is the index of the character T? It's at the eighth position is the, the first T. So again, this represents two types of immediate objects. An integer I typed in five, and a string I typed in now is the time. Let's go to another example. What we can also do, I can go page, new. Okay, so I was on page one, now I'm on page two. And by the way, I, I can save this. I can do things like save as and save my example right here. Let's go to page two. So let's do a bigger example. Well, one of the things, if you want some local variables, you put them within, okay, actually it's not, I'm gonna come up here and go to options for my new my new tab, style of small talk, type in a vertical bar, and it gives me two vertical bars, and this is where I can put in my temporary variables here. So I'm gonna say numbers and n. I click on end, next line. And I can say numbers, okay, tab, numbers, assignment is colon equals. So numbers gets ordered collection new, period. So if I, if I did this and in, inspected this, I have a new ordered collection. I can also I'll do this whole thing and inspect it. I'll get the the ordered collection. Uh, it thinks I'm not using n. I haven't used it yet. So, numbers, I tabbed, add, an ordered collection understands add colon 
5, the immediate object. Let's do another numbers. Add 7, period. And then n, I'm going to use n now. We'll make that, make that satisfied. n gets numbers size. That's a unary message. So this is a unary message, unary message, keyword message. Remember, the keyword message with a colon. Uh, assignment is the colon equals. I'm using that twice here. And I can evaluate that. Now, one thing that's special about a workspace, so, so this is how you have this in your method, a method being the equivalent of a function or procedure in a traditional language. One thing I can do, let me erase this for a minute. If I, if I evaluate this first line, it will actually create this as a variable right here. This is just for the workspace. So I don't actually need to type that in. And if I wanted to get rid of this, I could remove this just like that. So this will create numbers and n for me, but in a method, when I'm actually writing the code, I'll, I'll need to, I'll need to uh, represent the, declare the temporary variables between the vertical bars. So if I, the, the advantage here is I, I can keep these variables and, and see them. They're not, they're not temporary. So if I execute that, okay, now I can actually go to numbers. I could go over here to variables or just here to numbers, highlight it, and inspect it, and I will see, okay, it's an ordered collection with one, uh, with five, five and seven as the two things that we added. I can go to N and inspect that. And as, I, as expected, it's two. So again, I'm using, I'm using a variable. I'm using assignment. Now this is, ordered collection is a class. It's a type of, it's basically a type of data structure in Smalltalk, but that they don't distinguish them. It's a class that's the factory for creating a, an ordered collection. And the typical thing you do to send it, the kind of the generic thing to create a new object is sending it the message new. Then we added five and seven, got the size of that, assigned it to, to N, and, and we looked at those. Let's do another one. Let's say nums get array new, another type of data structure. And an array understands nums at, at put for an array. So let's say at one put five period nums. I'm tabbing at two put 11. Well, now there's one problem I'm going to have here. Let's do that. And it's going to say, hang on, this is, I got a problem. Subscript out of bounds. Okay. So in order to collection will grow. An array, we have to give it the size. So I can, if I want an array that can hold five objects, array new colon five. Now let's do this and it works fine. Let's take a look at what nums is. Inspect it, okay. I've got an array that can hold five things and only the first two are filled. At the, the first position is five, at the second is 11, exactly like we would expect. So this is small talk syntax. Remember, uh, we have unary, binary, and keyword messages. R right here we see unary and keyword with the colon. Back on page one, we also had a uh, binary, which are one, one, or two characters, and, and largely done so, so mathematical expressions look, uh, look, as we would expect them to. Unary binary keyword. If we have more messages in something, the order in which they're evaluated, left to right, things in parentheses first, all the unary, 
then all the binary, and then all the keyword messages. So I can have an expression with a unary message, and the result of that is a parameter to a keyword message, and the, the unary uh, message will get evaluated first. So this was a quick introduction to evaluating small talk code in a small talk workspace. Just to give you a quick a quick feel of, of what small talk feels like. Again, my name is Arden Thomas. Any questions, feedback, please send an email to athomas at syncom.com. Thank you.